Hello friends, this video on how do organisms reproduce part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Next one is regeneration. Now, fragmentation and regeneration, many people get confused between these two. Many of them think that both are exactly the same. However, they, they have a lot, these two processes have a lot of similarity amongst themselves, but they are not exactly similar. So we will see how. What is regeneration? A parent, if cut or broken into multiple pieces, each gives rise to a new individual. So here also, if a parent is broken into many pieces, each of those pieces will give rise to a new individual. Now, do you see any difference between fragmentation and regeneration? In fragmentation, this breaking up happens on its own. As soon as the organism becomes mature, it breaks itself into many pieces. But in case of regeneration, the organism doesn't break itself. If by any chance it gets broken into multiple pieces, it has the capability to regenerate its parts. So that is why regeneration is said to be an accidental process. That means the organism doesn't do it on its own. But if accidentally it gets broken or it gets cut into multiple pieces, each of those pieces will give rise to a new organism. Because So the similarity between fragmentation and regeneration is that in both the processes, the broken pieces have the capability to form the new organism by cell divisions. And the difference is that fragmentation happens as soon as the organism becomes matured. It breaks on its own. In regeneration, the organism doesn't break on its own. If accidentally it gets broken into pieces, then this process of regeneration happens. So we can say that this process of regeneration is not the same as reproduction. Because when I talk of reproduction, it is something which is under the will of an organism. An organism will know when it wants to reproduce, right? But the kind of process regeneration is, it is an accidental process. And an organism can, cannot wait to be cut to reproduce. That means any organism cannot only depend on this process of regeneration to reproduce. Because what if that organism never gets cut or it never gets broken? In that case, it will never reproduce. So this regeneration is just one type of uh, reproduction. This reproduction is, I mean, there is no such organism which only depends on regeneration for its reproduction. So this happens by some specialized cells that have capability to develop into different body parts. So this development of each part of the body into the entire uh, organism is known as development. So this is seen in organisms like hydra, flatworms, tapeworms. But again, I'm mentioning it once again, that that doesn't mean that these organisms depends only on regeneration for their reproduction. They also have other ways of reproducing. For example, in case of hydra, just now we talked about budding, right? So hydra can reproduce by budding. It can reproduce by regeneration as well, right? So how this regeneration happens? Here we have taken the example of planaria, which is a flat worm. So I'm sure these are no more new names to you. We have discussed all these things in your class 9, diversity in living organisms. In case you want to get an idea about them, please refer that video. So here you can see if somebody cuts this planaria into pieces, into three parts. Now each of these pieces will gradually grow the other parts as well. That's because each of these parts are made up of specialized cells that have capability to develop into different body parts. So here you can see this middle part of the body was capable of forming even the head and the tail. The tail was capable of forming the head as well as the neck. The head was capable of forming the middle part as well as the tail, right? So, this is again a, a different type of asexual reproduction because even at the end of it, at, at the end of the process, you are getting three new organisms. You are getting three new planarias, right? So, this is regeneration. So, I'm sure you are no more confused between fragmentation and regeneration because Many people actually do. Many people even say that regeneration and fragmentation are exactly the same thing. I, I'm sure they are similar, but that, no, they are not exactly the same. So let us look at the next type that is spore formation. 
So here formation of new individual happens by germination of spores. So we have a new term here that is spores. So let us first try to understand what, uh, what are spores. Spores are unicellular bodies in the parent that are capable of growing into a new individual. So these are small bodies which are present in the body of the parent organism. Let us take an example. Have you ever observed the molds formed on a rotten object? For example, here in this picture, you can see a rotten tomato over which molds have been formed. So now if you look at the structure of the molds very closely, what do you see? They are thread-like structures and on top of these thread-like structures, you have small spherical structures, right? So it, the structures are somewhat like this, correct? Now, what are these molds actually? It is rhizopus, right? the fungi. So, these thread-like structures on top of which are present these tiny blobs. These blobs are known as sporangia and these sporangia contain spores. And spores are small unicellular bodies which are capable of growing into a new individual. Like as I said, in every organism there are some specialized cells which are capable of growing or which are capable of reproduction. So in these organisms, these spores are the ones which are capable of forming a new organism. So let us look at the structure even more in more detail. So this is how it looks like. So these structures are known as sporangia and inside the sporangia you have small unicellular bodies which are called spores. Now otherwise the spores always stay inside this sporangia or inside this covering. So why do they stay inside covering? To protect themselves from unfavorable conditions. Now whenever these spores come in contact with some moist surface, now moist surface that is watery surface which contains water that is suitable for the formation of new organism. So whenever it comes in contact with moist surface the outer covering breaks the spores come out and they begin to grow. So now how are these spores formed? They are formed by repeated division of nuclei. So that, that's very common by division of the nucleus only new organisms are formed. So inside, so it is also a little similar to the multiple fission. In multiple fission also we saw that under unfavorable condition a cyst is formed inside the cyst. The nuclei divides many times and when favorable conditions come the cyst breaks and all the nuclei comes out. So similarly here also this sporangia they act as the cyst. So inside the sporangia the nuclei divides many times to form the spores. So when the favorable condition return here favorable condition is the moist surface. Whenever it comes in contact with the moist surface the thick outer covering breaks and the spores come out and they start growing into new organisms. So these kind of uh, asexual reproduction is seen in many algae, bacteria as well as fungi. So here we have taken the example of rhizopus which is a fungi. Now the question is how are spores dispersed? Since spores are very small bodies, they can be very easily dispersed by wind or water or by insects or small animals. Dispersed means carrying the spores from one place to another. Let us suppose right now the spores are here, but by, with the help of, I mean, if wind blows, it might get carried away to some distant place. And if that distant place has some water nearby or some favorable conditions for the spore to grow, so it can start growing at that place. So the spores can be carried to, since they are small and they can be easily carried, so they are carried to distant places by wind, water or insects and animals. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.